Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys? We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband! Wife! Do you remember where we're at even though we're in Psalms? I, um, no. We're starting book five. Oh, that's right, that's right. We're starting a new book of Psalms. The last book of Psalms. The last book of the book of Psalms. That's exciting. Yeah, and I can tell you that... Um, we're going to be reading three of them today, and the third one is a real doozy. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So you're not going to make it a downer today. You're not going to like. No. Okay. So it's so a hang in there. Stick around. For Stick the around third one. for the third one. Yeah. Okay. Got yeah. it. Um, before we get into anything else, I do want to mention that we had um somebody contribute to our um fundraiser, li- fundraiser for our live equipment for our, no um, for our equipment for the live yeah, event. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> Wow. Hello. Anyway. Yeah. So, uh, Carmen. Carmen. Thank, thank you. you so much. You, uh, Carmen is a current patron with us as well. Aw, And thank so you, Carmen. the extra added bonus for us was a much appreciated gift and really, really thank you. Yes. It's like a ton and thanks. A ton. Thanks. Thanks yeah. a ton. Um, if so anybody else thanks. would like to give, I think today is probably the last day. Oh. Um, so you can text, just like I said in the intro before, I guess I say it again, text SACDIS to 53555 or click the link in the show notes mm-hmm. and you can help us out today on the last day. Yep. I think we still have like 80 bucks to go. Oh, well, so, please help. Yeah. So we can get our equipment for our live event. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that being said, today, what are we going over? We are, as I said, starting book five, the final um, book of the book of Psalms. We are covering Psalms 107, 108, and 109. Awesome. Let's go do this. Okie dokie. All right, here we go. Starting the last book of the book of Psalms. Okay. With Psalm 107. There's no supra text but I'm sure it's of David. <laughs> and it's I a mean, psalm. if we had to guess. You it's know. a psalm. It is a psalm. Okay. Yeah. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Again, no. No, he's a dick. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this. Those he redeemed from the hands of the foe, those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. (sighs) This is Moses they're referring to, I'm assuming. Sure. I have no idea. Right, whatever. Then they cried out (coughs) to the Lord in their trouble right here in River City. And he delivered them from their distress. Yeah, he did. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Okay. Was it straight? Was it a city? Well, I mean, not if we, it was Moses. We're ta- well, but we're talking about once God decided to finally get them there. Right. But so. again, I don't, I don't know about all that. Right. Let them give thanks to the Lord for His unfailing love and His wonderful deeds for men, for He satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. But not for women. Not for women, Just and for also, men. um, when they complain about being hungry, He barrages them with uh, too many pheasants. pheasants. Yeah. Yeah. Some sat in darkness and the deepest gloom, prisoners suffering in iron chains, for they had rebelled against the words of God and despised the camp- counsel of the Most High, because that's what you do to the people you love. Right. right. You put them in a deep, dark dungeon and lock them away. And chain them up. Yeah. yeah. And kill yeah. them. Right. Kill them and dance in it's their good blood good stuff, stuff right there. Yeah. So he subjected them to bitter labor. They stumbled and there was no one to help. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. You know, the distress that he He caused put them in. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. He brought them out of darkness and the deepest gloom and broke away their chains. The chains that he had put them in. Right. Right. 
I'm not understanding this. Well, I mean, he has to make sure that you worship him by punishing you and torturing you and maybe almost killing you and sometimes killing you. Yeah. So, I mean, it, you you wouldn't know to worship God unless he was an asshole at you. Right. That's so, the only way you can know God. So it's kind of like um, if I walk up to somebody and I push them down into the street and they get hit by a car and then I'm like... <sighs> But then I put them in my car and I rush them to the hospital. Right. And they should worship sure, you at that yeah, point. Yeah. And then Definitely. they should tell me thank you. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah, didn't you feel me kick you to make you get run over yeah, by you that had, car? I had to punish you. I had to hurt you mm-hmm. so that you would appreciate me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love because I always shove the people I love in front of a car. Right. Yeah. Right. And his wonderful deeds for men, for he breaks down gates of bronze and cuts through but bars not of iron. iron. Wait, what? <laughs> cuts through bars of iron. I call bullshit. I, yeah, he doesn't like iron. He, he don't like that hates iron. iron. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At least he's from a what I heard. Tale. Right. Because fairy tale creatures hate so iron. So I don't think this is true. This isn't true. I mean, that right there, mm-hmm. that proves this whole fucking thing wrong. We can just stop. It was all fine and, <laughs> and it was all believable right up until that, that point. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some became fools through their rebellious ways and suffered affliction because of their iniquities. You're a fool, darling. You're a fool, darling. Thank you. I love you. (laughs) They loathed all food and drew near the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. Uh You know, the distress that he caused. Right. Always. Yeah, Yeah. He sent forth his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Again, it's kind of like if I stab you, but then I donate my kidney to you. Yeah. So you shouldn't be mad that I stabbed you and caused you to need a kidney in the I'll first place. I'll still be mad. You might be mad? I am I will definitely be mad if you stab me. Even though I gave you my kidney? Worship yes. me. No. Tell me thank you. No. Tell me I'm the best. No. Fine, then I'm going to stab you. <laughs> See? You deserved it. <laughs> Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Let them sacrifice think offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. Kill things to praise me. Yes, kill yeah. things to praise me. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I want that on a t-shirt. Kill things to praise me. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Others went out on the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. Then they saw the works of the Lord, his wonderful deeds in the deep. I bet they're talking about Leviathan. You think? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. Right. You know, he made Leviathan. Right, right. Mm-hmm. For he spoke and stirred up a tempest that lifted the high waves. They mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. In their peril, their courage melted away. Sounds like a tsunami. Yeah, because that's what a tempest is. Yeah. A storm. Right. Yeah. They reeled and staggered like drunken men. What would you do with a drunken sailor? What would you do with a drunken sailor? (laughs) They were at their wits end. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he brought them out of their distress. The mm. distress, again, that he caused. Right, yeah. He stilled the storm to a whisper. Ah. Hush. Yeah. The waves of the sea were hushed. Oh, that's funny. I hadn't read ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. They were glad when it grew calm, and he guided them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Let did, them exalt him in the assembly of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. What now? Did he guide them or did the navigator guide them? Like, I'm, I'm betting that it was the navigator because unless he, like, you know, turned the boat himself, mm-hmm. he's not really guiding them. Right. He just, you know, he, at, at best, if we're assuming God, right, mm-hmm. in this book, mm-hmm. at best he stopped the fucking storm. Well, maybe he uh, said, follow me in my pillar of smoke. I guess you could say he put the stars there in order to guide people. Of course. So I guess he technically. Might have, he might have talked to their hearts and been like, turn left. <laughs> See, that's what Google does. Okay, so yeah. Say it's like God. an internal Google Maps. Yeah. God's like internal Google Maps. God is like a GPS. That must be what it's like. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. think it tells you when there's a cop ahead? I bet not, though. No. No. Mm, okay. No. That's a shitty GPS. Right? right there. Yeah, I don't like that. Not that I speed. Speeding no, never. Is yeah. Dangerous. Right. 
He turned rivers into a desert. I did speed. I got a speeding ticket, remember? I know, right? Yes. It was like within the first week that we moved oh, to this house. I was so angry. You were very angry. Because what you is had warned the, me. I had warned you. But the thing is, is I just still didn't, I didn't know. You didn't listen. I listened. And look, okay, to be fair, when I say I was speeding, I was going 45 and what I thought was a 35 but it wasn't a 35. It was a 25. No, but, it's a 35. Oh, but it was marked down to a 20 because it was school. And I didn't right. know that it was school. So I was going 45 in a school zone. Wow. But I didn't That's shitty. know. I didn't know. You didn't know it was a school zone? I didn't pay attention. Hmm. I just, hmm. I, I was bad. I don't know about all this. I was bad. I was wrong. I should have listened to you. I should have been more observant. How many tickets have I gotten since I moved here? None. Actually, in the last 10 years. Well, technically, that ticket was your ticket because the car was in your name. <laughs> no. And it was an auto. So <laughs> yeah. it was an auto snap thing. Yeah. So technically, one. Mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what? He turned rivers into a desert, flowing springs into thirsty ground, and fruitful land into a salt waste because of the wickedness of those who live there. Because mm. starving people to death is what you do to your enemies. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's you kill them hard. Humane, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. He turned the desert into the pools of water and parched ground into flowing springs. There he brought the hungry to live and he founded a city where they could settle. They sowed fields and planted vineyards that yielded a fruitful harvest. He blessed them and their numbers greatly increased and he did not let their herds diminish. Okay, I have to say something. Okay. I absolutely despise that the word vineyard is pronounced vineyard because there's an E and the word is vine. And why is it not vineyard? Because it's vineyard, obviously. I know that, but it should be vineyard. I mean, yeah. You're not right. You're right, vineyard. obviously. So it makes me angry that we've collectively... We should, just, we should just collectively change it and just start saying vineyard. Vineyard. Just to piss everybody off. It's a yard of fucking grapevines. It's vines. a fucking vineyard over there. It's a yard of vines. Yeah. I'm going to say yard of vines instead of vineyard. There you go. That way See? nobody can be like, oh, she doesn't know that it's pronounced vineyard. <laughs> instead of looking stupid, I'm just going to say, oh, look, it's a yard of vines. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm going to say. Okay. Then their numbers decreased and they were humbled by oppression, calamity, and sorrow. Womp, womp. He who pours contempt. Oh, wouldn't it be funny if there was a Bible that actually had the words womp, womp? It would. It would. That would be hilarious. I keep telling you we need to do a sacrilegious discourse Bible. I, I'm going to. And you keep saying that. It's going to have the words womp womp in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. He who pours contempt on nobles made them wander in a trackless waste, but he lifted the needy out of their affliction and increased their families like flocks. The upright see and rejoice, but all the wicked shut their mouths. Shut your mouth. Yeah. Okay. Whoever is wise, let him heed these things and consider the great love of the Lord. I just, all I see is things were good and God was good. Things got bad and God was mad. That's a rhyme. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. It was. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, like, it's just always, if things are bad, mm -hmm. God's mad at you. Yeah. If things are good, God likes you. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the whole concept of the Bible. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. And it's just silly. It, it's childish. Yeah. It's so like early man. Right. You know? Well, I mean, yeah. We build skyscrapers. We passed the moon and got to Mars now. Like, come on, guys. Mm -hmm. Keep up. Yeah. Science, bro. Right. Okay. So Psalm 107 is the Lord delivers from trouble. 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 And it starts, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Okay. I've got a little bit of lengthy notes here because there's some about the directionals okay. that he gives in yeah. here, okay? Mm -hmm. Psalm 107 is a song of thanksgiving to God who has been merciful to his people and gathered all who were lost, you know, with his GPS. Yeah. Okay? So it is believed, oh, I'm sorry, is beloved of mariners Due to its reference to ships and the sea. Right. Because it guides them back to port. It said stuff. the word water in it. We love it. <laughs> it's kind of like my mom. There's a cross on it. I love it. Even right. if it's like from the dollar store and painted like cheap and shit. Yeah. And it looks like trash or like a third grader made it. Yeah. 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 I'm like, you can love God and you can love things that have God in it. And you can even love the cross if you really have to. Even though like it's a 
kind of grotesque. Right, but right. Whatever. You can like your little idols if you want, but could we not admit that that one looks like it was, you know, painted by a kindergartner? Come on now. Right. It, it would be, it would, have some taste. the cross would be like if somebody died, if Jesus died today, right? Mm -hmm. And we all started worshiping, but that he got killed in an electric chair. It'd be like wearing a necklace with an electric chair on it. Or um, a mass shooting and everybody started wearing necklaces with guns on, oh wait. Right. <laughs> we kind of do that, don't we? Yeah. So you may have noticed Psalm 107 is one of the longer psalms in the Bible. Not yeah. the longest, but it was a, a bit lengthy. Right. The theme of the psalm moves forward from section to section. And in the Masoretic Hebrew text, there are seven inverted nuns. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but I had to put it in my notes because inverted nuns. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what that means I don't either. know what that means. Okay. okay. You didn't so, look it up? Didn't, didn't It wasn't there wasn't notes on it and like I did a quick Google and like nothing came up immediately. So I was like, okay, we're gonna get back to that then. So Are we I, gonna get back to it though? Yeah, I put in my notes as I need to find out about inverted nuns. Okay. They're satanic nuns from uh good omens. Okay. Okay. Oh the um what was it? The order of the, the chattering order. The chattering order of nuns. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, you're right. Good call, kid. The Psalms date from anywhere between the 5th and 13th century B.C. and 400 B.C. Oh, okay. That's a big window. They could have just said, we have no fucking idea when it was written. Right, right. Although the exact timing of the writing of Psalm 107 is uncertain, it was most likely written during a time of increased union among the Jewish people during the reign of King David which was 1010 to 970 BC. Okay. Okay, so yep. we have an idea of when it's supposed to be about. Right. Um, have you found anything about I inverted did, nuns? Actually, oh, it you is did? a um it is a rare glyph used in classical Hebrew. Its function in the ancient text is disputed. It takes the form of the letter nun in mirror image and appears in the Masoretic text of the Tanakh in nine different places. So you don't know what it means either. I don't know what it means either, but it's a rare glyph used a, a, a certain glyph amount of times. It's like a steely? It's like a letter. It's a letter. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's not a hieroglyph. It's a glyph without the hieros. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, I I don't know I don't know what it means, but it's rare. It's, it's rare. And it exists. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. So there's seven inverted ones of those. Yeah, so um yeah, because it's the mo of I, I don't I don't know. There's some other stuff here too, but I it's too much to read real real quickly. So yeah, so that's why I said we'll have to come back to that. All right, all right. Yeah, fair so enough. So inverted nuns, got it. Yeah, check. Sorry, it just it was bugging me. I know, I could tell because you weren't <laughs> listening. I was listening. Not hard. Not not real hard. Okay. But I was listening. Okay, so we're gonna get back to my notes now. Okay. The rest of them that aren't inverted nuns. Not the inverted nuns, right. Okay. In the psalmist assessment, acts of infidelity often seem to correspond to an eventual awe-inspiring work of mercy from the Lord. Okay. So you do something that's bad, but then something good happens and you're like, JK, I love God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The psalm also includes several more specific themes which emphasize the general tone of praise and thanksgiving. For the God of Israel. Yay, God! Yay. I mean, that's a lot of these. Right. Okay. So in the introduction, the Lord is said to, quote, gather the redeemed from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Did you remember right. all yeah, that? Right, yeah, yeah, Okay. So following this, the next four sections address individuals who wandered in desert wastes, sat in darkness and gloom, were sick through their sinful ways, and who went down to the sea in ships. Okay. Okay. So those are each four different things. Yeah. Okay. Each of these locational descriptors corresponds to a cardinal direction. Okay. okay. So the desert wastes mentioned in the second section of the psalm indicate a great eastern desert that might be beat down upon by the sun, which rises in the east. Okay. Okay. So that's the east. Likewise, in the opposing western section where the sun sets, the Israelites are said to sit in darkness and gloom. Got it. Okay. The correlation depicted in this section between darkness and helplessness, apart from the aid of the Lord, 
harkens back to Old Testament descriptions of Abraham. Okay. I didn't catch any of that, but they right. mention it's particularly in Genesis 15. Got it. Okay. okay. And I'm like, if you say so. Sure. Throughout early Hebrew history, north was thought to be the direction most associated with evil and iniquity. Like, here huh. there be dragons kind of thing. Yeah. Thus adding emphasis to the direction of north's correspondence to the fourth stanza, stanza beginning with some were sick through their sinful ways and because of their iniquity suffered affliction. So that's yeah. the north. Okay. Okay. And finally, in the orientation of the region that Israel occupied at the time of Psalm 107, to the south lay the sea, directly paralleling the beginning of the fifth section, some went down to the sea in ships. Right. So okay. each of those things was one of the directions. Got it. So he started out saying the directions and then described them which we were supposed to take as being those directions, but okay. we don't know those things. Sure, so yeah. We're like, oh, okay, sure. Right. So Psalm 107 is above all a hymn commemorating the power of God. Mm -hmm. He's so powery. Mm -hmm. Despite the transgressions of the Israelites, the Lord forgives them. He's so sweet. <laughs> He's a nice guy. They should make Hallmark cards about that guy. They do, sadly. Oh, yeah. 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 The works of the Lord, however, are mentioned in many psalms. So what makes 107 so different from them, right? Yeah, sure. Okay, so it's somewhat unusual in its depiction of the works of the Lord as explication for the people. The psalm is a hymn of thanksgiving to the Lord for the purpose of making the Lord's works known to humankind so that they too can join in the praise of the Lord. Okay. It's circular. Okay. Yeah, right. This concept seems to indicate that David has written a sort of circulatory hymn thanking the Lord for enabling the Israelites to thank the Lord. <laughs> thank you for letting me thank you. Right? That's oh, my gosh. different from the um, thank you for being a friend. Ooh. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and confidant. Okay. Do you remember at this time what it is? You, last time I sang it, you didn't That's remember. Golden Girls. Yeah. That is Golden Girls. Yeah. And that is exactly not the kind of friend that God is. Right. He's like, I will allow you to thank me. And the people are like, oh my God, thank you for letting us thank you. That's awesome. And thank you for letting me say that. And thank you for letting me say that. And that and that is so many things. Right. These concordant themes of enlightenment and gratitude reinforce each other throughout this and the rest of the fifth book of Psalms. So Yay. we've got more of that coming. Yeah. Psalm 107 is often quoted at events involving the Navy and seafarers, such as at the launching of ships. Okay. okay? That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I'll let you have that. Right. Whatever. Right. All right. So now we're going to do Psalm 108, which is not too long. It's kind of short. Right. So, yay. Yay. This is a song, and it's a psalm of David. Okay. Okay. So this psalm of David is a song. Got it. Okay. Yep. Just making sure you got it. It's not that I just wanted to say psalm. No, that's or not it song at all. No. Right. My heart is steadfast, O God. I will sing and make music with all my soul. La, la, la. Awake, harp and lyre, lyre. Liar, not Lear, liar. Okay. okay. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. La, la, la. For great is your love, higher than the heavens. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't some groups of Christianity not like music? Yeah. So, like, there's so much in like here about, there's so much stuff. in the Bible about singing and mm -hmm. dancing even. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? Where? Because. Why? Because joy is sinful. You're only I supposed guess. to be dour sons of bitches. Right. Okay. Uh, your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be over the earth. Oh, baby, baby. Save us and help us with your right hand, those that those you love may be delivered. God has spoken from his sanctuary. Bum, bum, bum. In triumph, I will parcel out Sheshem and measure off the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is my helmet. Judah is my scepter. Moab is my wash basin. <laughs> I would I, not want to be God's wash basin. That's where I dip my balls. <laughs> Upon Edom, I toss my sandal. 
over Philistia, I shout in triumph. Mm. Yeah, baby. Could you keep it down? We're trying to sleep, dude. Yeah, stop singing and tossing sandals and whatnot. <laughs> Who will bring me to the fortified city? Who will lead me to Edom? Is it not you, O oh God? You who have rejected us and no longer go out with our armies? Give us aid against the enemy, for the help of man is worthless. With God, we will gain the victory, and he will trample down our enemies. Woo! Yeah, we don't need people. Shit. Yeah. We just need God. And guns. God and guns. Well, yeah. Back then, it yeah. wasn't guns, but... Sure. But it would have been had they had them. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. So, Psalm 108 is a prayer for help against the foe, and it's also referred to as the warrior's morning song. Okay. Like, sun rises in the morning. Not yeah. Not like, right. I killed you with my guns, and now I'm in morning. Do you know, morning. Do you know how I know where the sun comes up? How? The Muppets. Mine is um because of the song from um, um, Beauty and the Beast. Right. That's so funny that we both remember the sun rises in the east because of some kind of kids there, show. There's a there's a part in one of the Muppets songs that says, "I've never seen the sun come up in the west." Oh, see, I see, and that was that's how I always remembered. Well, see, mine, that the sun comes up in the east. Mine is from that song where um, Angela Lansbury is the teapot singing about. A tale as old as time and the, as surely as the sun rises in the east. Right, Isn't right. Isn't that funny? Yeah. We can only remember it because of kids' things. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Thank you, Disney. Thank you, Jim Henson. <laughs> okay, so this one starts, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. And Psalm 108 contains numerous virtues. Vir not virtues. Mm -hmm. Verses. Verses. It contains numerous verses which appear in other psalms. And because of this... Is considered by some to be the borrower. <laughs> so it was. It was, it was a was mishmash, patty whack, give a yeah. God some, a bone. Somebody was like, "I need a psalm." They're like, oh, "Let's just get some some uh, Take salvation a little bit of this and a little and bit some, of that, some rock and Ford, you know, whatever. Let's pull some a little bit there. There we got it. We got it. Get it. Yeah, we got it. You left out the word refuge. Fortress. Refuge. Refuge. God Ref damn yeah. it. Well, we're stuck Salvation. for it now. He already started carving in the rock. <laughs> <laughs> the Midrash teaches that verse 2 refers to David's practice of arising each night before dawn and praising God with psalms and harp, thus, quote, awakening the dawn. Mm. Remember I said the harp and yep. I called it a liar? Yeah. Or I called it, I forget what I called it, but it's a Whatever. liar. Right. Yeah. So he plays those and awakens the dawn and that's what that verse refers to. I see. Okay. Okay. All right. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Ready? I'm ready. Psalm 109. Yeah. I was very, when I read my notes on this, I was like, I cannot wait to read this and see what it <laughs> says. Okay. Psalm 109. Okay. For the director of music of David. Of David. A psalm. Yes. Okay. Oh God, whom I praise, do not remain silent. For wicked and deceitful men have opened their mouths against me. They have spoken against me with lying tongues. Nah, those assholes. I hate them. Yeah. With words of hatred, they surround me. They attack me without cause. In return for my friendship, they accuse me, those fuckers. <laughs> but I am a man of prayer. They repay me evil for good and hatred for my friendship. Mm. So why, why would you be friends with somebody who hates you? I don't know. That doesn't make sense. I don't know. I think he's just really paranoid. I really we've, do. We've talked about. I know, this I know, but it, like, just the more the, it's a lot of parent. Like, like it's a lot of the Psalms. Mm -hmm. the, the, he's they're gonna get me. Right, it's yeah. all through here. I'm like, dude, it not everybody's out to get you, man. Defines the Christian way and the right way. It's true. As a whole. Like, yeah, Christians really they're do feel like paranoid. everybody's out to get them. They're gonna get me. Yeah. Appoint an evil man to oppose him. Let an accuser stand at his right hand. When he is tried, let him be found guilty. And may his prayers condemn him. Mm. May his days be few. May another take his place of leadership. So he is like cursing this dude to death. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. May his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. This is some shitty stuff to ask. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I'm not. That's not this nice. This is not nice. May his children be wandering beggars. May they be driven from their ruined homes. May a creditor seize all he has. Who wishes ruin on children? Like that's Christians. that's a horrible thing. Christians. Yeah. 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 
May strangers plunder the fruits of his labor. May no one extend kindness to him Jesus. or take pity on his fatherless children. My God. May his descendants be cut off, their names blotted out from the next generation. May the iniquity of his fathers be remembered before the Lord. May the sin of his mother never be blotted out. May their sins always remain before the Lord. May he cut off the memory of them from the earth. Jesus. For he never thought of doing a kindness, but hounded to death the poor and the needy and the brokenhearted. So, you know, we, we hate that guy so hard. We want to just follow him around, throwing rocks at him and showing him how much we hate him. Right. Because that's a good thing to do. Yeah, it's in the Bible. Yeah. You know, he loved to pronounce a curse. May it come on him. He found no pleasure in blessing. May it be far from him. He wore cursing as his garment. It entered into his body like water, into his bones like oil. May it be a cloak wrapped about him like a bolt, Look, like a belt tied forever around him. You know, I, I, I got to say, it's not that, um, it's not that, uh, I, I'm not, maybe this guy was a bad guy, you know, maybe he, right. maybe he sucked, right? Yeah. But this entire thing that this, that David, question mark, wrote, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't make me think very highly of him. Right. He sounds like a fucking dick here. Yeah. And he's asking for this guy's complete and utter ruin. And that of his children and his wife right. and his mother yeah. and like no, everybody like, around him. This is really shitty. It's very shitty. Yeah. Yeah. May this be the Lord's payment to my accusers, to those who speak evil of me. But you, O sovereign Lord, deal well with me for your name's sake. Out of the goodness of your love, deliver me, for I am poor and needy. My heart is wounded within me. I fade away like an evening shadow. I am shaken off like a locust. My knees give way from fasting. My body is thin and gaunt. Thin and gaunt. I am an object of scorn to my accusers. When they see me, they shake their heads. Help me, my Lord, my God. Save me in accordance with your love. Let them know what it, that it is in your hand, that you, O Lord, have done it. They may curse, but you will bless. When they attack, they will be put to shame, but your servant will rejoice. My accusers will be clothed with disgrace, wrapped in shame as a cloak. With my mouth I will greatly extol the Lord. In the great throng I will praise him. For he stands at the right hand of the needy one to save his life from those who condemn him. That's such bullshit. Yeah. Isn't it, though? I am the only one that's worthy here. Kill mm -hmm. all my foes. Believe me. Don't believe anybody else. I, I, it's... Yeah. It's... Uh... So this psalm is called... A cry for vengeance, but it's also known as the Judas Psalm or the Iscariot Psalm, which Iscariot is Judas. Judas Iscariot was his name. Okay. Prayer for deliverance from enemies. Okay. So yeah. this is known as a lot. It starts Song of the Slandered. <laughs> Psalm 109 is noted for containing some of the most severe curses in the Bible. Huh. Not just in the Psalms, but in the Bible. I don't know. I thought, I, I okay. All right. Like all together in one, like that sure. was a you know, lot. Sure, it was a long, yeah, it was, yeah. A, it was a long list of uh Yeah, of this shit. wasn't spread out through different chapters. This right. was all one chapter. Fair enough. Okay, it is classified as one of the imprecatory psalms against deceitful woe, foes. Okay. Okay, and we remember that an imprecatory psalm is where you're specifically asking the Lord to do a thing for you. Yeah. Okay. In verse 13 where it says, let his posterity be cut off. That should be translated as, may his sons die childless. Mm. Okay. And in the generation following their name be blotted out means in the next generation, let their names be removed from the registry of the citizens because the extinction of a family name was considered the most extreme calamity for the Israelites. Wow. Yeah. So give him the thing that we think is the worst thing ever. Right. Do that to him. Right. Right. Okay. Here's where we get really interesting. Okay. And I was just like, oh, damn. In the United States, verse 8, may his days be few, may another take his place of leadership. Remember uh -huh. that? Yeah. Has been used by a number of fundamentalist preachers, but this has been, con this use has been condemned by others. But here's where it gets really interesting. Okay. Okay. In 2009, the media reported more widely on its usage in reference to President Barack Obama. Hmm. Yeah. 
in January of 2010, a Florida sheriff's deputy was suspended for highlighting the passage in another deputy's Bible and adding the note, the Obama prayer beside it. Oh, wow. Yeah. In January of 2012, Kansas Speaker of the House Michael O'Neill sent an email quoting verse 8 to his Republican colleagues that stated, At last, I can honestly voice a biblical prayer for our president. Look it up. It is word for word. Let us all bow our heads and pray. Brothers and sisters, can I get an amen? Amen. Oh, my. Yeah. That's some shit. Right? Yeah. On June 10th in 2016, Georgia Senator David Perdue quoted the verse referencing Obama at the Faith and Freedom Coalition's Road to Majority Conference. Jesus. But by late summer of 2017, bumper stickers could be seen asking people to pray for U.S. President Donald Trump with the same attribution. Really? Yeah. Now, I never saw one of those. But, I didn't either. And I would think that here in Ohio, where we are in um, big Trump County country, yeah, that we wouldn't see that. Right, right. That's true. So... I, I just, I don't know how to feel about that. Like, it's nothing I would put on the back of my car for either direction. Right, right. But, like, damn. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, that was my notes on those three psalms. All right. So, that uh, concludes, well, that doesn't conclude shit. It concludes today, which yeah. where we covered uh, psalms 107, 108, and 109. Correcty doodle. And tomorrow we'll be back hypothetically with 110, 111, and 112 because I can count. Awesome. We will see you guys then. Yep. Bye. Hey, wife, I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh, my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh, yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.